thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to hang out with me. Today's video is another collab with my girl Get This Glowing. And this idea was probably one of the hardest tag I've had to do because it is five products over $50 that we don't want for free. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, wait, I kind of want some of these things. Because a lot of these items, actually I think all of them, come from brands that I haven't personally tried yet. It's just seeing the releases, does it jump out at me? Is it their price? Was it reviews that I've already read? So there was a lot of different factors that I took in the approach. Definitely check out Get This Glowing's channel. I will leave a link in the cards as well as the description to check out her picks. I'm very excited to see if we have similar picks, a similar approach, and what brands she choose. So if you're interested in seeing what my five products that I don't want for free, definitely keep on watching. Before you jump in, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel before clicking off this video. I post new videos Monday through Friday of subscription unboxings, beauty hauls, first impressions, eyeshadow palette reviews, and more. Also, I hope you're watching during the month of December because I have my massive holiday giveaway currently open right now. There will be a link in the cards and the description below to check out after watching this video and checking out Get This Glowing. I will put a picture over here of the products because I'm looking at Sephora's website. Everything that I chose is from Sephora. First product I chose, only tried one product from this brand and it's Charlotte Tilbury. I couldn't decide if I wanted to choose the eyeshadow palettes or the infamous Film Star Bronze and Glow Contour Duo that Smoky Glow is always talking about how it's not worth $70. And the more I look at it, the more I'm like, why is this $70? You get two shades. You get a contour sculpt shade as well as a highlight. I don't see how either of these shades <laughs> really could do either. My opinion is that the sculpting shades on both the fair medium and medium to dark are gonna be very hard to work with. I don't find either of them working too much for me. Fair medium looks too light, it's not gonna show up. And then medium dark, it looks too orange and red undertone for my liking. Same with the highlight. I feel like the highlight <laughs> doesn't even look like a highlighting shade. It looks like a setting powder as well as the highlight for medium dark. It looks more peachy orange that it just want to look good on me. Why does it have almost a five star review is what I'm wondering about. You only get 0 0.56 ounces, so divide that by two. So it just doesn't make sense to me. I just don't understand for the price point and what you get, why it is that much money. Even if it was given to me, I probably wouldn't even use it. It would probably get decluttered right away. I can't fathom, I can't wrap my brain around this product at all. I see what Smoky Glow is saying. I'm not here for it. I've only tried a lipstick from Charlotte Tilbury. I really liked it. It was really good quality, super creamy, very comfortable to wear, but her eyeshadow palettes and the face palettes just don't scream at me at all. And another thing I do have an issue with Charlotte Tilbury is their shade range. I've been wanting to try their foundation as well as their setting powder, but I feel that I can't really find a shade that matches for me. I find like the undertones just are very conflicting. They're either too pink or peach or yellow for me and I lean more towards a neutral undertone. I, I just struggle finding products that could possibly work out for me from this brand. I'm kind of conflicted on this product as well because I chose this out before they dropped a awesome collection which I am eyeing. I still don't know if I'm gonna get it yet because of how inflated the price is, but the next product is from Pat McGrath Labs and it is their Mothership palettes. I haven't even swatched anything Pat McGrath before. None of the Sephora's around me carry it, but I'm referring to their Star Wars collection, which I kind of low-key want because I am a huge nerd. I love Star Wars and R2-D2 is a star of like the lipstick or a balm. I need it. I am such a sucker for the droids. I don't know. $125 for an eyeshadow palette is really out of whack. <laughs> I know the same can be argued for Natasha Denona, which I finally did bite the bullet and tried that brand. They came out with the smaller Sunrise palette, which I love. Or is it the Sunset? I always get it confused. My dyslexia kicks in between those two palettes. But I can kind of justify that more because you do get a decent amount of product and a decent amount of shades, whereas Pat McGrath, this is only 10 <laughs> shades. And they all look shimmery to me. I don't know if it's all shimmer or if there is a matte, but I do need a balance in my palettes. As much as I'm here for an all shimmer look, which I have done before, they are some of my favorite looks that I've done, I feel like I still need a matte, <laughs> just in case. It's like a safety net, but I don't know. I, uh, it's just so expensive. I mean, I'm sure the quality is good and it's justifiable, but for me, it is not. I, I still cry every time thinking that I bought the Metropolis palette. It's still unused because of how high of an item that is. So I feel like the same way about Pat McGrath. I've been wanting to try it, I just, uh, 
I, I just sound like Chewbacca there. I just struggle really just spending that much money on that one item for just 10 shades. And I find her lipsticks a little bit more expensive too. They're not over the $50 threshold, but they're $10 away from it. And I can't fathom that much money on a lipstick where I can pay $7 on a ColourPop lipstick and it's going to last so well. I have a lot of mixed feelings about Pat McGrath. It's mainly just the price. But as I mentioned, I haven't swatched or tried anything, so I don't really have much room to speak, but just from looking at it, it just turned me off from the price, especially with how much product you get. This next one makes me chuckle because it is the Dyson Supersonic Hair Dryer. In what world would you pay $400 for a hair dryer. Now, I will say I do have the dry bar hair dryer, which is about like 120-ish dollars. It was a birthday gift. I didn't personally spend that much money on a hair dryer. I don't know, and I know Dyson has good vacuums, but when you're known for vacuums and now you're making a hair dryer, wouldn't you be afraid of like the hair dryer just sucking up your hair or something? Maybe that's just me and an rash fear, but that was my first thought when I first saw this Dyson hair dryer. It just looks weird. I feel like it just wouldn't do my hair justice. Even my dryer bar hair dryer it takes me a while to dry my hair because I do have a lot of hair so it's gonna be harder for me to get a lot of use out of a hair dryer typically I just air dry my hair it takes like a whole working day for my hair to finally dry down and it takes it even longer if I put it up because it will still be damp the next day. So that's just how much hair I have going on to work with. I honestly hate blow drying my hair. That's probably why even if I got it for free, I still wouldn't want it because it would just get tossed to the side. I would give it to a friend, family member, or a giveaway. I just know I wouldn't want to use it. As cool as it looks, it just doesn't uh, look so practical. You know, you know how much you can get with $400? A lot of things. <laughs> That's a car payment, that's half of rent a month's worth of groceries. Unpopular opinion, I think it's dumb. <laughs> I think it's just one of those items that is just completely bougie that the Kardashians would have. And don't get offended if you have any of these items. This is just a fun tag. This is just my thoughts and my perspective on some of these items. It doesn't take away the quality or how the products perform. This next product is going to be another unpopular opinion because it is a beloved brand that just doesn't work for me. And it is the Drunk Elephant Refrigerator Trunk 3.0 for the holidays 2019. None of their products have worked out for me. I don't know what it is. I love their new product that they just released. It's called F-Bomb. And I want it just because of the name. But even then, I doubt it's going to work for me. All their products have stripped away my moisture. The little moisture that my dry skin has. And I just get so worried trying some of their products because of the bad experience that I've had. I just don't know why it doesn't work out for me and my skin type. I don't know if I'm just too dry or what. But nothing has worked out for me. And I saw so many people go crazy when this was being released and I had a little bit of FOMO, not gonna lie. Looking at it, you essentially pay for about four or five items because their items are quite expensive. You get all those full size items with a really cute skin refrigerator. Even if I bought it or if it was given to me for free, it would just go to friends, family, or a giveaway because I've tried four or five of their products. I've either had to return them or throw out the sample because it just doesn't work out for me. It makes me so sad because I hear so many great things about Drunk Elephant, that their products are really good quality, they have done really good things for people's skin, and I'm like, why doesn't it do it for me? <laughs> I tried the cleansing balm, did not break down my makeup, the moisturizer made me super greasy, their cleanser stripped away my moisture, so I don't know what kind of sign this is. I don't know if it's my face just purposely neglecting and resisting this brand because I already do have a very pricey skincare taste but I mean it's good for my bank account but it's also like I want one product to work for me. Just one. And I think if they come out with a sleep mask that's something I am going to try because I love sleep masks. Not that I'm like the expert at it but I feel like I'm a connoisseur at this point so I kind of just want to give that a shot and see. But F-Bomb also seemed pretty promising as a product as well. I'm praying to the skincare gods that one of the products will work out for me one day. And then the last product, <laughs> this is so obscene to me. It is the La Mer, the moisturizing soft cream. In what world should a cream be $510? I don't care if it's moisturizing or it's softening. There are so many other good creams out there that can get the job done that isn't $510. I always see La Mer, or La, however you pronounce it, La Mer. <laughs> 
I've only seen it in stores at my bill. They have like this bougie fish tank. I'm like, those fish are probably living a better life than me. <laughs> But anyway, I just don't understand spending that much amount of money on a cream. On a cream. And I know that some people are probably looking at me saying, but you spend $65 on Tatcha water cream. And I know, that's like my limit <laughs> right there. That's where I cut myself off. But $510? I don't know. Have you guys tried Le Mer? All their products are like a few hundred dollars <laughs> a product. So it's more than Drunk Elephant, but it's still like... How? And I get it that it's a French brand, it's luxurious, it's supposed to be up there, but I just can't wrap my head around paying $500 for one cream product. Those were my five products that I wouldn't even want for free. And I know that I kind of took this approach of products that I would spend money on, but it goes back to even if I got them for free, I wouldn't want them. <laughs> Like, it's just so unjustifiable and not good use of just my money or my time because I even have like a feeling that these products would even work out for me in the long run. That's probably why I'll never try these products. They just don't meet requirements for my needs for either makeup, skincare, or hair care for that matter. But it was a very interesting tag. It really got me thinking about it and I think out of everything that I chose, the only brand I would probably explore a little bit more would be Pat McGrath. And it's for that Star Wars collection. But other than that, I don't find myself ever trying any of these products, wanting them on a wish list or receiving them as a gift. As much of an honor it would be to receive those products a try out to let you guys know, I just don't find them being that practical for me and my needs, but that's just me. And I would love to know what your five products that are over $50 would be that you would even want for free. It's really hard to think about. At first I thought this was gonna be really easy and then I was like, wait, <laughs> I kinda wanna try this, kinda wanna try that, but these were like the five that I could really narrow down. And this is my first time not having honorable mentions. So definitely let me know in the comments below what your five products would be. Are any of the products that I mentioned on your list? We have the same brands. I would love to know what your thoughts are on the products that you chose and why. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And if you don't, thank you for the view anyways, and I'll see you in the next video.